one of the most essential servers in an enterprise network is domain controller before learning about domain controller let's understand what happens when a new employee joins the company the new employee is issued a computer asset either a laptop or a desktop a user account has to be created on the laptop the laptop needs to have some default applications like ms office acrobat reader microsoft teams etc and few custom applications like tally photoshop etc the person needs access of all the tools he or she will be working with so in order to meet these requirements the system team do the following either get a new laptop or format an existing laptop install all the default apps used by the company create the user account for the new user on the laptop set a password give access to the right resources if all these tasks are one time activity there are some recurring tasks too like keeping the os updated keeping applications updated every now and then when the user forgets the password the admin has to reset it now let's see what are the challenges that the system team would face issuing laptop installing application and providing access to tools seem to be one time task and can be done when the employee joins the company but how about keeping the laptop operating system and applications up to date what if the user forgets the password for his account what if the user needs to install additional application should the system team ask the employees to visit it help desk every time they need to update the operating system or install a new application or even to reset the user's password i mean imagine doing this for thousands of employees and also we need to keep track of which laptop is assigned to which user all these challenges are addressed by a server called domain controller domain controller is a server which is used for centralized administration of users groups computers and any other objects in the network let's look at these entities in more details users means every employee of the company will have a user account created in the domain controller groups means several groups like hr engineering sales manufacturing will be created when a user is created he will be added to a appropriate groups these are similar to our the whatsapp group that we use next we have computers all the computers are linked to the domain controller this will help in centrally managing them like running updates and changing configurations objects all the entities including users group a computer a file or a drive are called as objects now you might be thinking who develops these domain controllers one of the most popular domain controller is microsoft active directory in fact 100% of the companies i have worked with uses active directory and as a consultant i have worked with more than 120 companies alternately there are some linux based domain controllers as well now let's learn about the different functions of active directory few of the functions of active directory include making all the systems part of the domain creating and deleting user accounts creating and deleting groups add and remove users from groups which is equivalent to giving them or removing the permissions password resets are done on active directory group policies are configured and pushed to all the systems in the domain via active directory now let's take a closer look at each of these functions one of the functions of active directory is to add all the computers to the domain whenever a new employee joins he or she will be given a laptop or a desktop this system will be made to join the domain now that the new system is a part of domain ad will be able to manage it all computers will be made part of the domain because all computers are part of the domain the settings on each of these can be controlled by domain controller another function of ad is to create user accounts when a new employee join the company 
along with the system they are given an identity in the company which we call the username this username will be created in active directory apart from username active directory will also hold details like full name password email address phone number department etc if a user account can be created in active directory obviously it can also be deleted i'm sure you might be wondering what is the use of storing all the usernames and passwords in active directory because users will be logging on to their laptops or desktops and not to the active directory this can be explained with the next function of active directory active directory also takes care of authentication when a user in the company logs into his or her computer the authentication request is sent to the active directory the ad then checks if the username and the password matches with what it has stored if so it will send authentication success message and the user will be able to log into his computer if the username and the password does not match then the user will be displayed the same error message isn't this great now an administrator can easily know who has logged into what computer across the network this information will come very handy during security analysis another function of active directory is to do password resets when a user say bob forgets his password he will call the it help desk help desk will log into active directory and reset the password for bob this new password is shared to bob over the call bob can now log on to his computer using this new password now you might be thinking bob's password is known to the help desk agent which is not a good practice that's why when the agent resets the password he will enable a setting that will force bob to change the password on his first log on another important feature of active directory is to create groups let's consider the example of hr team usually they'll be working on same application to manage the employee details like an hrms tool human resource management system tool or an insurance tracking tool etc they will be having access to certain websites which others in the company might not have for example job portals like this let's assume there are 30 different permission sets and privileges for a hr person in a company so every time a new hr joins we need to give him or her all these permissions and privileges this would be a repetitive task this can be solved by creating a group called hr and assigning all the 30 permissions and privileges to that group now all the hrs are made part of this group when a new hr joins he or she will just be added to the group thereby getting all the 30 permissions and privileges typically groups like hr sales finance support it etc will be created in companies another useful function of active directory is the group policies group policy is a feature of windows that facilitates a wide variety of advanced settings that network administrators can use to control the working environment of users and computer accounts in active directory policies can be applied at different levels in a domain it can be applied at a user level at the group level or an organization unit level some of the examples of group policies include disabling usb ports on systems changing wallpapers on all the machines in the domain restricting users from changing any system settings ensuring users keep strong password which is the password policy etc as we will learn in the future various other applications will use ad groups to apply different level of privileges to different groups of employees so let's recap the functionalities of active directory that we just learned they include making all the system part of the domain creating and deleting user accounts creating and deleting groups adding and removing users from groups password resets are done on the active directory group policies are configured and pushed to all system in the domain via active directory before we complete this module on active directory let us also see where 
Active Directory is placed in the network. Because Active Directory is a server, obviously it will be placed in the server LAN.